Greetings, friends. Thank you for joining me here today where we'll be finishing another drawing for Mermaid Day 21. This one I chose not to live stream because I wanted to really focus on it and not have to split my attention between drawing and looking at the chat. Uh, but of course, please feel free to leave your comments below. The prompt for this day was futuristic, which I was very excited for because I knew I wanted to incorporate this aesthetic from a story I've been trying to develop for a few years now. I started out, as always, by writing out the prompt and doing a few sketches to get a feel for what I wanted the drawing to look like. This time I actually focused a little more on Ariel's features. Um, for those who haven't seen my other videos, I'm doing Mermaid this year, but only with Ariel fan art. <laughs> Anyway, I focused more on her features first, again, because I was going to change her basic style by incorporating my own aesthetic. So I did a quick sketch of that first to nail down things like the hair and the outfit, then moved on to another sketch where I laid out the pose. I do multiple sketch layers before I'm ready to move into the line art. For these mermaid drawings, I've been averaging usually two to three sketch layers before I feel like it's good enough. Um, and it, it helps because, so for example, in this, the first sketch layer, I didn't actually add in any of the clothes because it just got too, <laughs> too much for me. Um, I use a lot of lines when I'm sketching and so sometimes it's nice to just get one version out and then start a new layer so that way I can start to refine my lines from there without things getting too dark and cluttered because I, as much as I try to draw lightly to start with, it doesn't work out very well for me. So I just make a new layer and set the original layer to a lower opacity. With this second sketch layer here, I kind of did that, started to clean up the lines. I did feel pretty confident with a lot of the lines that I had in my initial sketch, so that was nice. Um, and then I was able to just refine certain things, like you'll see I have to draw the hand <laughs> over and over again, um, her, her left hand specifically. And even in doing the line art, I still kind of made some changes to it. But I was able to refine very minorly a lot of those lines that I drew in the initial sketch, then also put in her clothing on top of everything that I had drawn in the original layer as well. Something funny that happened that I didn't realize until I got into the coloring portion, which you might not be able to see at this point either, but I think it becomes a little clearer as, as I'm coloring the whole thing. I didn't realize how like much I made her <laughs> look seahorse inspired in this, which is actually not the truth at all. So you could kind of see when I did my first sketch layer, I drew out a little clam shell because that, that was what I wanted to do with her hair was make it look a little bit shell-like um, since, you know, she already has the shell theme in the bra. So I thought, why not incorporate that into her hair too? And then hopefully it would look less like I gave her Ray hair. But <laughs> I think there's nothing wrong with having Ray hair. Ray hair is awesome. But I wanted to make it like more unique to her, right? Uh, so I tried to make it look like some sort of seashell, but I think the way it came out in here and then also the kind of strings coming out from her overshirt, those were inspired by like some butterfly moths that I found. So I have a ton of images saved to Pinterest that are that I use as inspiration for the story that I'm developing. Like I said, this is kind of 
the aesthetic for this drawing is based on that. And so that's what I was using was these, I don't know if they are butterflies or moths, they have these like tail bits on them. And that's what I was putting onto her shirt, but I just felt like as I was coloring it, it started to remind me a lot of seahorses. <laughs> but it wasn't intentional. But I think it's okay that it ended up that way. These, th these things happen when you're making art and when you're doing anything really, these things just happen. When I did finally get to doing the line art, at first I was going to try coloring all of the lines to begin with, well really starting with color for the lines to begin with. And I started doing the hair and then I just thought, this is gonna be too much work because I really prefer to have, if I'm going to be doing something with line art, kind of prefer to have like one layer for the line art. I did actually end up with two layers in here because I felt that it was easier to put a lot of the details on a second layer to draw them out so that if I needed to erase anything, it didn't mess up the base layer that I already had. But for the most part, I prefer to have one layer or to not have to think about certain things being in front of or behind other things. Some objects end up being both behind and in front of the character, and so to have to create multiple layers to account for that, I just didn't feel like doing it in this case. So I decided to just do a solid black line for this drawing and then just kind of color that in. When I've done my lineless ones, they just take so long. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I knew that I wanted to do a decent amount of coloring for this, so I didn't want to make too much work for myself. So you'll see I started with that red line for the hair and then very quickly gave up on that. For this drawing, I ended up putting in a lot more detail than I think I tend to in, in most of my drawings because there's all these little added things like kind of beads to the ends of the shirt in various different places. I kind of gave her a tie at the top of the shirt that sort of pulls both um, sides of the top in, adding lines to like the shirt underneath to give it a more fabric look. And then of course, because part of the aesthetic from my story is the elect electronic looking bits, <laughs> um, the electronic looking details on the skin and for Ariel, they're also on her tail and the fins. And so that was a lot to, um, to try and draw in as well. So those were details that were very necessary though, in order to really make it stand out as being part of that aesthetic. Unfortunately, I think my screen recorder dropped a lot of frames in some of these parts. So I apologize if there's huge gaps where you don't see a lot happening and then suddenly there's a bunch drawn in, but, um, Hopefully it's not too distracting, but it really, that's what <laughs> it skipped. It's just all those parts of me drawing in little tiny details and it takes a while sometimes. I get very impatient often when I'm trying to do stuff like that. And so, especially if I'm on a bit of a time crunch, I might not incorporate those things in my drawing, but I'm really glad that I took the time to do it for this one because I think it helped a lot. And I've been reading some advice from artists about actually not incorporating too much detail into your drawing because it can be too distracting or too time consuming, right? But I think this was a good amount of detail to put in. It's like that balance. You don't wanna have nothing because then it looks too flat or, right, like I said, it doesn't bring in that sense of like a story behind the drawing. It just feels like lines on a paper or on a screen. So for this, although I guess it was pushing me a little bit out of my comfort zone, I actually not only am 
glad that I did it, but I did have fun while I was doing it as well. So maybe I just need some more practice <laughs> and then and then things like that will come a little more naturally to me as well. I think it also helps that during this mermaid process, like the whole month, I've been focusing more on getting things nailed down in the sketches. So really, I think that maybe in terms of my final drawings, it's not necessarily that that art has improved throughout this process, but I think I've learned a lot about my sketching process and the things that I do to get to those finalized drawings. Doing this mermaid art challenge has helped me a lot with that. So I think that getting certain things nailed down in the sketches allowed me to put in those details and feel more comfortable putting them in and feel more comfortable taking the time to put them in because everything else was already pretty refined or at least refined enough <laughs> for this. So I didn't have to feel like I was wasting my time by adding those things in because the rest of the drawing was already how I wanted it. And so adding these in was just kind of giving it more flourish. Then once I had the line art done, I started with coloring. I've been using the same colors for the most part in all the drawings, but this time I actually decided to start a little fresh with the hair. And I think just maybe the hair, everything else, I think I kind of pulled from the other drawings that I've done more recently. This one, um, because of the hairstyle in the aesthetic, it needed to be a little different and not just a solid red color. Um, I have all these different streaks of like different shades happening in there. So that's why I kind of just decided to pull new shades um, for this instead of going back to older drawings that I've already done. Unlike the line art, I do keep colors on separate layers. So one of the things that you'll see me do here is that I actually separated the hair onto different layers. I think I ended up with two or three different layers for the hair. And that's so that I can color it with the hair, I was a little bit looser <laughs> with everything. Again, because of the texture that I was giving to it, it was just easier to color everything first. And then instead of erasing, I used the layer mask to hide any of the areas where I didn't want the color to be. So that's a trick that I talked about in my last live stream for the wrath prompt, that masks are a great way to Remove things that you don't want to be seen without completely deleting those pixels. It's a great method for non-destructive editing. So that's what I did with the hair. And then for some of the other layers, like you can see with the skin and the clothes, what I tend to do is kind of just color an outline and then use the paint bucket tool to fill that in. And then I have to take the brush tool again and just go over any gaps because it will leave a little bit of white behind or really alpha behind um, when you use the paint bucket tool. So that's about the easiest process that I found for coloring these things in. And what I tend to do is I'll get like base layers down first. So I'll do one layer for each kind of element in the drawing. So I have layers for the hair, a layer for the skin, a layer for the tail, layer for the fins, layer for the bra. And then this um, particular drawing also had the shirt and the little skirt-like thing. And I think I might have done another layer for other details that she has and a layer for the face. So I just kind of like go through and repeat the process, but I'll do one basic layer. And then after that is when I go in and add shadow and in this case I also tried to put in some highlights and usually what I do for that is to create new layers and then just use um, the base layers as clipping masks for those so I don't have to again I don't have to worry about going outside of the area and then like having to remove things um, delete things completely I don't have to worry about that <laughs> 
So that's what I do. We'll start with a basic color and just get everything filled in first and then go back and start adding in shadows, highlights, that kind of thing. Then my last step for this drawing was to put in the background. It's something that I, I'm trying to remember to start a little bit earlier in the process, especially because, you know, what the background is can affect the way the colors look in the actual drawing of Ariel. Especially when I'm adding in new colors like this orange and the green in the skirt, then it can be more important because if you study colors, you know, certain, you might have one color that looks very different when it's put up against other colors. A color that's up against white, that color is going to look very different when it's up against black. So I'm trying to incorporate putting backgrounds in earlier in the process, but for this drawing, it did not happen that way. And what I did was I wanted to just have kind of a full background here. I just made a rectangle using the shape tool so that way I could once again use clip masks and just kind of use some of the brushes that I have to make a nice pattern for the background and I made this like orb thing <laughs> that I put a glow on and it looked kind of like a moon is it supposed to be a moon I don't know but I, I put it there because I felt like it, it needed something else in the background to create hopefully some more visual interest um, and I had to play around with it a lot because 
I, like I said, I wanted something else there, but I didn't want it to be too distracting. And I didn't want it to not stand out enough from the background because then what would be the point of having it? So I had to play around with it quite a lot. Um, and I wanted to give it some texture too, but not the same texture as the background. So I played with that a lot. Um, I finally got to a place where I felt like it was okay. And then once I cropped down my file, I added in a layer that was just black and lowered the opacity so that way it would separate Ariel from the background a little bit more. And then I had to mess around with that a lot too because it, I didn't like what it was doing to that orb. <laughs> In the end, I actually made another layer to put over the orb so that way it wasn't affected by the black in the same way as the background was. up with I think that I'm pretty happy with how it turned out and like I said this was one that I had a lot of fun with it's hard to believe that we're already so close to the end of mermaid once again I'm pretty proud of myself for having done 21 drawings in a row every single day it takes takes a lot but like I said I've learned a lot through this process I don't know how much my drawings have improved in the end but I think that my process for drawing has improved a lot and honestly that's worth it and now the other thing too is that now I have all these drawings that I never would have had before if you have been participating in mermaid or if you are thinking about participating in an art challenge I would love to see what you've done so you can let me know in the comments um, let me know where I can find your drawings you can send things to me if you want to see the rest of my mermaid drawings the best place to go is my Instagram it's at in a wooden house you'll be able to see all of the mermaid drawings that I've done in a row because I haven't been posting anything else over there um, you can also send me things on Twitter it's the same name there um, and definitely after Mermaid is over, I'd like to continue doing these kinds of videos and again live streaming. So if you have any ideas for things that you'd like to see me draw, let me know and I will be happy to try to accommodate that. <laughs> um, or if you have any other topics for videos related to drawing, animation, stuff like that, just leave me a comment and I would be happy to try and do my best to make you guys some cool stuff to see <laughs> um, but yeah that's it for this video thank you once again for watching thank you for subscribing liking commenting all that good stuff and i'll see you next time peace out